Good morning. Uh, I think the plan this morning is to go and uh, get the combine and the grain cart and that last truck moved home from the field where we finished last night. We did get about two tenths of an inch of rain last night so we'll have to uh, see. I don't think we're going to combine any soybeans today. I may spend the day uh, out seeing some seed customers and trying to tie up some loose ends there. Dad had a bearing go out on that five shank ripper that he was using yesterday so I may spend a little time in the shop helping him get that fixed if he needs it. Okay, Dad brought me down to the field, uh, dropped off the combine here, we're going to drop the head, get the combine home. Uh, Phil's going to take that truck that's up there, take that to the elevator and drop those beans off. Uh, I'm going to pick all this stuff that wrapped on the reel last night off here before I unhook the head because it's easier to get to right now. Uh, we're going to combine home, Dad's going to take the head and then we'll come back and get the green cart loaded. Cold enough this morning that I turned the heated seat on in the combine. Nice thing to have. One of those things that do it at one hand, it makes it a lot harder here. I'm trying to get this lined up. I need that pad. Be right down there. Another one on this side. It's harder to see. forward a little bit more. Good. Okay, I'm going to go strap that head down. And I'm going to dump the rock, rock trap on the combine. I don't think I've got anything in it, but it's nice to do it every once in a while just in case. Though. All right, I'm uh, leaving the field, heading back to the farm. Um, this field's about 10 miles away, so it's a little bit of a long trip. We have a nice backup camera so I can see what's behind me. It's still a big, slow piece of equipment, so it is hard to see all the time. If you're driving on the road and you come up on a piece of farm equipment, slow down, give them plenty of space. Every farmer that I know will get out of your way when they have a safe opportunity to do so. Made it back to the farm here. Um, just real quick, I'll show you in the shop. This is the bearing that went out on that 512 yesterday. Dad pretty well had it back together when I got here this morning, so uh, don't have to work on that. That's not supposed to look like that. I think we're going to head back over, bring that grain cart home now. Getting the grain cart moved home here. One downfall to having tracks is you gotta go slow on the road. This tractor's actually got an IBT transmission in it. It will go 31 miles an hour, but with the tracks on the grain cart, they tell you not to go over 20. So it'll be a slow trip home. All right, I am back at the farm with the grain cart. Uh, it is a crappy overcast day. It's still misting a little bit, so uh, we're not gonna combine any soybeans today. Uh, I've got a Go work on a computer for a minute here. Um, we've got a crop consultant we work with that does all our soil sampling and he needs a list of fields and what crops we're gonna plant in them next year so he can make up some fertilizer recommendations. Dad and I are kind of back and forth on how much fertilizer to put on this fall. Um, you know, with having so many prevent plant acres and just not knowing how things are gonna turn out, we're trying to save some money and be a little bit conservative, but at the same time, I don't wanna make this year's problem next year's problem by not putting the fertilizer on. So we want to get a look at the test results and see what their recommendations are and then we'll decide how much uh, and where we're going to put fertilizer on this fall. Okay, I got that list of uh, our fields and plans for next year sent off to our crop consultant. Um, there's not a whole lot going around on around the farm here today since it's too wet to combine any beans. Um, do a little bit of maintenance to do to the combine, just want to go through the bean head, uh, check the tension on the draper belts, and grease stuff good. Um, I might come back and do that this afternoon, but I'm going to spend the next few hours out on the road calling on some of my seed customers. Okay, so far I'm striking out today on the seed business side of stuff. 
Uh, I did find one guy to stop and talk to, but stopped at about three or four other places and nobody's around. Apparently all the farmers took the crappy weather day off today and I don't know where they're at. That's okay. This is where my dad grew up, my grandpa's place. Uh, we have around 600 acres centered around this. And like I said, we're about 35 miles straight east of our other farm. So it's kind of a whole separate deal, but uh, enough to make our trips worth it down here. You can see we do have uh, another grain setup down here. It's a little bit smaller. We've also got a barn over there where we can store some equipment and stuff. So sometimes we'll bring stuff down here if we're gonna leave it for uh, over winter. We're not gonna use something for a long time. Like for example, our corn head is in the barn down here. I thought about taking that back up to Waldron with me because we're probably gonna start shelling corn there first but I'm uh, thinking it's probably gonna be at least a week or two before we do that, and I'm just not quite ready to have that sitting around up there yet, so I'm gonna leave it here for today. Uh, I do wanna walk out in our cornfield down here. This was actually the first corn that we planted. It was on June 4th this year. Uh, I planted a little bit of some 108 day corn. I wanted to see if the frost killed it down here as well, and uh, if we've matured, maybe take a couple of years, we can take back and test it, see how wet this corn happens to be. So I'm not going to walk too far out here, but just enough to grab a couple of ears. Plants are definitely dead, and the leaves being a little bit green like this, but dry tells me it probably got frosted and didn't just dry mature, dry naturally. So it is very hard to peel ears back with one hand, but that's what we got. It feels fairly dry, so that's a good sign. We'll take a couple years back, take a sample on them, and we get back to the farm. Um, a couple other things I just wanted to check out while I'm here. I've got a couple more customers to try and stop and see on my way back up to the farm. And we'll see what time it is when I get back up there. Okay, I'm back at the farm here. Um, I got these ears that I picked uh, down the Berkey, and uh, we're gonna test them, run them through the moisture tester, just see where we're at. This is, should be the wettest corn we have anywhere, so I don't expect it to be dry. But, uh, never know. Let's see what we got. Thirty-two point seven. If that's our wettest corn. I'll take it. I ran another sample through. Uh, this is actually corn from the same field. Both of those were 108 day varieties. I grabbed a couple ears out of both of them just to see the difference. Uh, this one, is that backwards for you? Yeah. 24.6, it's uh, eight points drier. That is really good, I'm happy to see that. 108 day corn was the fullest season corn that we planted this year because it was June 4th when we started. Uh, normally I would plant somewhere from 105 to 112 day. This year, 108 was the full season stuff and I went all the way down to a 98 day corn just because it was so late. So I'm actually gonna run out to the field right out here, uh, which is where I have some of that 98 day corn and grab a couple ears just because I'm curious to see where that stuff is at compared to these 108 days. You can definitely tell just standing in this corn that it's a lot browner. Um, this corn's been mature, it's been black layered for a couple of weeks now I would assume. Um, We'll see what moisture sample says. We'll just pull a couple of years and we'll take them up and let them be tested. So there's not a whole lot of difference between that first uh, or the last 108 day and this 98 day stuff. That's interesting. Either way, uh, we were hoping that we would find some corn below 25% this fall, uh, given how late it was planted. So if we're at 23, 24% right now, by the time we get to harvesting it in a couple of weeks, maybe we'll be down around 20%, which is pretty much normal for us. So that's great. Not a whole lot going on here this afternoon. Uh, Phil's got the truck in the shop here. The belt on the engine was squeaking a little bit, so we were trying to figure out what was causing that. Pretty sure it's the water pump. The uh, 
pulley here is just a little bit loose and wobbly so he ran to get one of those i don't know if he's going to come back here and change it tonight yet or uh, we'll work on that in the morning no big deal either way hopefully tomorrow's a better day the sun comes out and we can sh uh, run some beans um, if not i don't know maybe i'll try and see if we can do a little tillage work or something i'll have to figure out what's going on so uh, i am going to go home spend the rest of the evening with my kids and my wife and uh, we'll see what's going on tomorrow have a good night don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, find me on Facebook, Twitter, at Border View Farms. Leave me comments. We'll talk to you later.